Mrs. Yeah. Uh, Mo Monalisa Mona Sen, Monalisa Sen, yeah. uh, whom uh, I met when uh, I was Secretary National Biodiversity Authority. Uh, okay. She actually is the senior program officer from ICLI. ICLI is an international council for local environment initiatives. So she looks after the entire South Asia. So, uh, so she they are into uh, assessing the biodiversity in different cities. So they call it City Biodiversity Index. So she has done extremely great work in uh, most of the prominent cities. As we speak, she is doing the same work for Tirupati. So she is uh, in Tirupati uh, doing this uh, City Biodiversity Index uh, work. So she has a lot of information on how a biodiversity assessment takes place, how ecological landscapes have to be designed by city planners and so on. So without taking much time, uh, I invite uh, Dr. Mona Lisa Sen uh, to this uh, webinar. Mona Lisa ji, uh, please complete it by, uh, by now it is uh, uh, around 7.15, maybe half an hour you can take so that we have some Q&A and then we close it before 8 o'clock. Okay, over to you Mona Lisa. Thank you. Uh, a big thank you to everyone, the organizers and particularly Justin sir for giving us this opportunity to present our work. Um, basically, I'll just talk about the work that we've been doing. Before that, I'm not sure if the audience really knows what ICLE is. We are basically an international network of cities and we work across cities in the entire globe towards sustainable development. We have 17 secretariats. I represent the South Asia Secretariat, which is headquartered in Delhi. Our global headquarters are born. Uh, what we do is, like I said, we work towards developing sustainable cities and we work across five interconnected pathways, low emission development, resilient development, circular development, equitable and people-centric development, and nature-based development. So the biodiversity work that I do directly feeds into the nature-based development, but if you look at it, it feeds into all the other four pathways as well. That's why we call this as an interconnected pathway that we have. And we promote urban sustainability, we connect leaders, we do a lot of capacity building, policy level work, as well as ground level implementation. Coming to the fact that why do we actually need to even measure uh, biodiversity and conserve biodiversity in cities? Because Primarily, when we say biodiversity, all of us have this process or the thought process of thinking forests, rural areas, cities really don't come to our minds. So the first effort in this direction was taken in 2010 when the Cities and Biodiversity Outlook uh, publication was brought out. This is an ICLA publication and this was done along with the convention of Sec uh, the Secretary of the Convention of Biology and Diversity. And this is where the links between urbanization, biodiversity, and ecosystem services was brought out for the first time, where, which showed that cities play a major role in biodiversity conservation because rich biodiversity can exist in cities as well. And cities are not just areas which are there to use of the biodiversity. They also have to conserve it. <clears throat> this is a freely uh, available online document. The next thing that is available for cities is a local action for uh, biodiversity guidebook. Again, freely available for all practitioners because I understand there are a lot of practitioners and uh, city planners on the webinar. So these come up with a comprehensive guidelines on how biodiversity management needs to be integrated with city planning. Again, freely uh, downloadable, accessible documents. Coming to the City Biodiversity Index, which I will concentrate on more and I'll just touch on the other things that I've just been talking about. So this is a tool that helps cities evaluate and monitor their biodiversity. It's a self-assessment tool. It is very, very simple to apply and has scientific credibility. Also known as the Singapore Biodiversity Index, primarily because it was proposed by Singapore at the uh, ninth uh, CBD COP and it was endorsed at the 10th CBD COP, uh, ICLE has been a technical partner to the City Biodiversity Index right from its inception. This is the only global index which is endorsed by the Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, your presentation is not visible to us. It's not moving. One second. Just a second. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, we can see you now. No, uh, someone's mentioning they can't see the presentation. So we are not able the... to see. I thought you were just having an introductory talk. No, no, no. I moved a lot of slides. Uh, one second. Oh. One okay, second. Okay. Should we open it? I had sent it to you also. Yeah. Now yeah. is my slide visible? No, ma'am. Then you will only have to do it. Somehow it's not open. Uh, you keep talking. I will just share it with the uh, Yeah. Team. You keep talking, please. Yeah. So uh, basically, the Singapore Biodiversity Index has three pillars. First is the native uh, biodiversity in the city. Second is the ecosystem services provided by the biodiversity in the city. And third is the governance and management of biodiversity in the city. And uh, there, there are 10 indicators under the native biodiversity, four under ecosystem services, and nine under the uh, governance and, uh, of, and management of biodiversity in the city. So this nine indicators is what rests with the city corporation. That's how the city corporation plays a very big role in the city biodiversity index. The first part is the general profile of the city, but what is additional is that the biodiversity features come in into the profile and uh, in the city biodiversity index. The native biodiversity, I'm really sorry if you can't see these slides, all this is on the slides that I've put in. The native... I'm sharing it to uh, Sitrakshi. Uh, yeah. You have so, sent a PDF only. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, was, I tried PDF, I tried the uh, PPT, nothing seems to be getting shared. Uh, so the native biodiversity has things like uh, what is the proportion of natural areas in the city, connectivity measures, goes down to the protected areas in the city, and also documents the proportion of alien invasive species in the city. This has about 40 points. Ecosystem services, it concentrates on the regulation of water in the city and also the green cover in the city. And then the recreational services of the number of parks with natural areas in the city and the uh, uh, access that students below 16 have to these parks and natural areas. The third and the most important from a city governance point of view is the governance and management of biodiversity, which has things like budget allocated for, uh, yeah. Can you just go to uh, going down the slides or tell you where? You can just go through, just run through uh, from first and yeah okay yeah. so this uh, is uh, monolith just elaborate why this city biodiversity index is required and what is the significance yeah, of this yeah it's a new Whoever subject for the audience operating the slides can you just keep coming down a little yeah just yeah so this is i can just go through yeah can you just keep it no no just one slide back, back. back. next slide back back Next, next, no, no, not back. Next. Yeah. Next. Uh, yeah. yeah. So this is what I was explaining. The city biodiversity index has three pillars. The native biodiversity in the city, which has 10 indicators, ecosystem services provided in the biodiversity in the city, which has four, and the governance and management of biodiversity, which has nine indicators. So the governance and management aspect is completely rested with the city corporation, and that's how this starts playing a very big role for the cities. And uh if you see the way these indicators are distributed, it does not matter as to where the city is. It is not that a, a, a city in a, one of the global higher hotspots, like maybe Itanagar will grow, uh, will get more, a higher score than, say, a city which is not closer to the global biodiversity hotspots. It's not that way. It, it just distributes everything across uh, what is there in all cities and including the governance aspect. For uh, city planners, it's good to know that this city biodiversity index is part of the Climate Smart City Assessment Framework, which every city has to answer every year now. And it's also part of the Livability Index, which the National Institute of Urban Affairs has come up with now. So all cities have to go through this and have to apply this indicator every year now. Next slide. Yeah, this is what I was saying, that the city profile is just a general city profile that uh, all planners uh, can understand what is written in this. But what is additional is the biodiversity features and the administration of biodiversity, which comes into picture when we write the city profile from a uh, city biodiversity index perspective. Next slide. 
the native biodiversity, like I just mentioned, apart from things like um, what are the changes in the uh, species across five taxa, which is vascular plants, birds, butterflies, and the last two one can select depending on what city we are in. There's also a focus on proportion of natural areas, the protected areas, the connectivity that these protected areas and green spaces have. And also the 10th one, which is not getting visible, is basically the um, invasive alien species in the city. Next slide. Ecosystem services. Uh, this uh, concentrates on the water or basically the permeable surfaces in the city and also the green cover, which is the climate regulation in the city. Coming to the other kind of ecosystem services are the recreational services. So then there's a focus on parks with natural areas and the formal education that children have uh, when they visit these parks and natural areas. This here children classifies as the age group of below 60. Next slide. This is the one which is very, very critical because primarily entire data or entire work is from the city government, right from things like what is the budget allocation that the city has for biodiversity work, the number of projects the city is doing, does the city have a local biodiversity strategy action plan or not, does it have a formal methodology of consultation processes on biodiversity, the kinds of partnerships that the city has, the kind of awareness activities that the city does, and also is biodiversity and nature education included in the school curriculum. Next slide. So, well, uh, a lot more cities have applied this index uh, now. Uh, even in India, the count has increased, but this just provides a glimpse of the cities who have been implementing this indicator. Hyderabad is the first city in India to have in applied this indicator, and they are the only city till now to have uh, done the second version of it. Actually, all cities are supposed to revise this or revisit this indicator every five years, uh, this index. Next slide. This shows the cities in India that have done this. Uh, Itanagar is missing from this slide I just saw. Itanagar also has completed the city biodiversity index. And there are cities like Bangalore, Chennai, Vishakhapatnam, Vijayawada, Kadappa, and Tirupati who are in the process of applying the uh, city biodiversity index and coming up with their in, uh, reports on the city biodiversity index. Next thing. This is just a glimpse of some of the work that we have done on city biodiversity index, and this is how generally the reports look. The next slide. Okay, I'm just taking Bhopal as a case study just to explain these indicators as in little detail. The first one is proportion of natural areas in the city. It's very, very simple. Total area of natural restored or naturalized area in the city divided by the total area of the city into 100. Why I say this, it's simple. It becomes very difficult to map it out when we do it. Plus, but anyway, this is how it's done. And there is a scoring pattern on the basis of which the city gets points. The next slide. Bhopal, we did the natural asset map and then we figured out the areas and then they got a score. Uh, but for each city, this natural asset map becomes critical. When so once we start the citywide of index, this is the first map that we develop for each city. Next slide. Connectivity measures, like I said, this just shows what are the patches of uh, primarily water body areas which are connected within the city. And there is a calculation to this. I can go into this in detail offline, if whoever wants to understand this further. But for this, again, a connectivity map of the entire water system in the city is developed. And that's the next stage that we do once we start the city by the state next. The next slide. So Bhopal, this is how we did it. And then the patches are calculated as per the calculation, which I can take it offline with it's quite a detailed one. And then Bhopal got some score. Next slide. The native the, the native uh, back. The native biodiversity in built up areas. This is concentrated only on bird species. And what is critical here is to understand the number of native bird species that are there only in the built-up areas. Forest areas in the city will not count for this. So this becomes a little challenging because we really need uh, a point locations of birds which have been spotted. We use a lot of citizen science. We use a lot of eBird data and also do our own uh, um, analysis in the city and our surveys. Next slide. 
So this is what uh, Bhopal got as a score. It's, it's actually a very high score. They got four on four on this one. Next slide. Now, change in number of native species. Basically, this is that the total number of species of any particular taxa minus the number of species that have gone extinct. But these are indicators four to eight. These do not come into the calculations when the city is doing this uh, city by this index for the first time. So it's not cal calculated in the numerator or the denominator. The next slide. Proportion of protected areas in the city, protected natural areas, very, very simple. Uh, protected areas in the city divided by the total area of the city. Again, simple just in terms of formula. <clears throat> such cities are not able to give such data. So one has to sit and map out all these things. And then we come up with these results. Next slide. That's Bhopal score, uh, how we got it. And uh, go on to the next one. Proportion of invasive alien species. This is one of the indicators that we struggle with in each and every city because cities have not worked on the invasive alien species at all. First of all, species lists city-wise don't exist. That's a challenge that we have to uh, overcome. And then to find out which of them are invasive and alien. And that's another challenge. And then, of course, it's just a division of the number of alien species by the total number of native species into 100. For any particular taxa, primarily we get uh, data easily for plants, so we have been concentrating on that. But uh, in one case, we have done even for fishes. Next slide. This is the score. The, the city has got a score of two, so they need to work on more to reduce the invasive alien species. That's how their score will increase. Next slide. Regulation of quantity of water, like I said, this just represents the proportion of permeable areas in the city. So the total permeable area is again mapped uh, ground truth and then divided by the total terrestrial area of the city. The terrestrial area, in this case, the rivers do not count, the water bodies do not count, and a multiplication by 100 to get the percentage. Again, there are points for each of these percentages. Next slide. So this is how, again, the permeability map is developed and then the calculations are done. The next slide. Climate regulation, the, uh, this just primarily concentrates on the canopy cover in the city. So the tree canopy cover, again, is something which we map out with cities. Our cities are not at a stage where they have these canopy cover maps ready. So this is something which we do it when we are with the cities. And then we just apply the indicator. Next slide. This is the green or the tree cover map of Bhopal. Similar maps we develop for each and every city that we work in. Next slide. Recreation services. This uh, is basically uh, focused on the area of the parks with natural areas per thousand persons. Next slide. This is what Bhopal score. They got a very high score of four and four, just because they have protected areas, natural areas a lot within the city. Next slide. Uh, educational services, what is the average number of formal education visits which happen? None of our cities are able to score in this because education visits happen, but it is not formalized or it is not uh, strictly done in the syllabus. So we just have visits, but we don't formalize it. So till date, whatever city we worked in, nobody has got a score of even one. Everybody has got zero. Next slide. Like I said, see Bhopal again, zero. Next slide. Uh, the budget allocations, it's pretty simple in terms of explaining. It's the amount of money that the city spends in the municipal budget on biodiversity related activities divided by the total municipal budget of that year and multiplied by 100. Next slide. Uh, Bhopal got a very high score. They have 16% of the budget. We just completed Bangalore, which is outcompeting in Bangalore, has 23% of their budget allocated for biodiversity work in each year. Next slide. Number of biodiversity projects that the city has implemented. So with along with private sector, NGOs, et cetera. So uh, there are points on the number of projects. Next slide. So this reflects the kind of uh, collaborations that the city has. Bhopal 
see, even after doing 14 projects, they are not nowhere in the lower score of just one. So most of our cities don't score well on this. Next slide. Policies, this just concentrates on the existence of an LBSAP or the Local Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan. Very simple, if you have one and if you don't have one, if it includes CBD initiatives or, so, or not, then it comes when you have one. But Bhopal doesn't have, so I think we'll get a score of zero. Next slide. So several cities have started developing their LBSAPs after the City Biodiversity Index gave a score of zero on this indicator. Next slide. This is basically the biodiversity related functions which are there in the city, basically things like museums, aquariums, uh, insectoriums, orchidariums, etc., which are there in the city for use by public, which has public access. Uh, next slide. Paul should get a good score. Yeah, so they have a huge number of these things like interpretation center, medicine gardens, botanical gardens, herbarium, etc which are open to public, and that's how they got a huge score of this, four and four. The next slide. Again, interagency cooperation. How many agencies does the city government cooperate with on biodiversity-related activities? This agencies means the other government agencies, the parastatal, the uh, local agencies, as well as at the national level. Most of our cities don't score very well on this. Next slide. Say, Bhopal has only two, so it has scored only a score of one. Next slide. Uh, then again, formal, informal consultations, if they happen with regard to biodiversity related matters, some of the cities have got even four and four, like Hyderabad, Bhopal, I'm not sure how much it has got. So based on what the process is, there are very clear scores or points that are, the city gets. Next slide. Bhopal doesn't have, so it didn't get any score. In contrast, Hyderabad got a score of four and four. Uh, then number of agencies, NGOs that they partner with for biodiversity related projects. This may not be a financial partnering, it just could be uh, a facilitation partnering. Next slide. Bhopal, the city corporation here scores very well. They have a lot of partnerships going on. The next slide. Uh, is biodiversity included in the school curriculum? Most of our syllabus, ICSC, CBSC, or the state boards have things on biology, geography, etc., including the school curriculum. So all cities still now have got four on four on this. Next slide. The next slide. So this is the last one, the number of outreach events that the city corporation does with regard to biodiversity conservation per year. Again, this is something which our cities really badly lack. I have not seen any city go up to a score of two. Next slide. Bhopal got one. Can I have the next slide? So this is just a summary of the scores that the city has got. I would like to say it's this is an in, a index which is not compared between cities, but it's compared when a city repeats its index next time to see how much it has improved. Like Hyderabad in the first round during the CBD COP, they had done it and they got a score of 32. 2022, we repeated their index. They have got phenomenal jump. They have gone up to 56. Next slide. Uh, you can skip this, the next slide. And I'll just briefly touch on the LBSAP. Can we have the next slide? So this is uh, the guidelines for developing uh, the SPSAP and LBSAP have again been uh, developed by ICLE, uh, endorsed by the Convention on uh, Biological Diversity, freely downloadable for cities to be using this. And this provides a guidance strategy on how the LBSAP should be developed. The next slide. These are some of the works that we, LBSAPs that we have developed, Kochi, Gang Talk, uh, then Nagpur. We've also done Jammu, Srinagar, and Udaipur, Siliguri, Rajkot. These are still on the process. Noida is another one which we just completed. The next slide. Natural asset maps. Uh, this is something wherein we map the blue-green infrastructure on the GIS platform. This is something which our cities find it extremely useful and have been asking us to be doing this even in cities where we, we've not been doing the city by the index or the LPSAP. We've got requests from cities to do this work. So our cities, even if some of them have GISLs, do not have this kind of uh, training or as to how to develop these kind of maps. Next slide. 
So we've also turned these uh, natural uh, the natural asset maps into illustrated ones with support of a uh, cartoonist to make them more user friendly, wherein the city's biodiversity is showcased using one of the traditional arts of the city, like the Gangtok one. If you see, it's the Thanka painting that has been used. Kochi, if you see the compass, it's Kathakali over there. That's uh, something which we've been doing. Kochi has been putting up these maps in their parks as well, and it's there in front of the mayor's office also. Next slide. This is what we did for Nagpur, uh, since it's the orange city, so the orange flavor is there. Next slide. Panaji, this is the Azolo tiles. So we followed their uh, tradition of the Azolo tiles to build this. The next slide, we've done this across several cities. Next slide. Tree cover maps, like, uh, can I have the next slide? This is what I was saying. Cities come up with these requests of developing these tree cover maps. And now what we're getting further requests is to do a time series analysis for cities on how their tree cover has changed from 20 years, what it was back and to now. This is what you're seeing for Hyderabad. Next slide. This should be a Vadodara one. Yeah, this is for Vadodara that we have done. And we've been doing this across several cities now. Next slide. Some cities also ask for tree density maps. This is what Rajkot is. They, it's not just that these maps are kept static. Cities start planning where to do their plantation based on these maps. Where uh, are the areas? Where are which are the wards which lack green cover? That's how cities have been using these maps and find them very useful. Next slide. Well, biodiversity communication is a very important part. So go on to the next slide. We do such things like tree handbooks and some uh, comic books. Next slide. This is something which we worked along with an artist to come out with the ecosystem services provided by some of the common trees that we see across uh, several cities in India. Next slide. We have a nature interpretation center. This is in Kochi, now run completely by the city corporation. It's in one of their parks, and this gets a huge footfall of students as well as other citizens every day. Next slide. We also develop guidelines for cities. We can skip this basically how cities should develop an LBSAP, these maps, etc. Next slide. Um, we've done up an open, we do several open green space plans. The Miyawaki Forest Development Guidelines came up on request from MOFCC. The next slide. Uh, we have a global biodiversity reporting platform. This is called Cities with Nature. Again, this is the only platform accredited by the uh, Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity for cities to be reporting their biodiversity action to be feeding into the report of the Government of India, with re uh, which will go to the CBD COP coming up in October. Next slide. So there is a pathway which cities can take. It's the ICLE has a typical pathway of analyze, act, and accelerate a three by three by three matrix. This is a free of cost thing. A city can just register and use this entire platform to be uploading their work. And based on the uh, the analysis stage, act and accelerate, there are various uh, recommendations which come out which a city should can follow. Next slide. A lot of these toolkits which are available for cities are there free of cost on this uh, platform for cities to be using this. In fact, the, the City Biodiversity Index, we have now made it into an Excel-based format where you can just enter your scores and the report gets generated. Next slide. Uh, just a brief case study of Kochi. Kochi was the first city in Kerala to have developed the City Biodiversity Index and then their LBSAP. Uh, the LBSAP came up because they saw they got a score of zero in the LBSAP indicator. So the city wanted to improve the governance of biodiversity. And that's how the LBSAP was developed. The next slide. Within the LBSAP, they have identified nine critical ecosystems, agriculture being one. So to work on that, the city has developed a pollinator garden and to augment the pollinator diversity. And city is trying to work a lot more on urban food. Uh, to augment the agriculture sector. Next slide. Canals is another ecosystem which the city identified as critical and uh, going beyond just dredging canals, which most of our cities just do. 
Kochi is implementing things on green gray infrastructure using uh, gray solu uh, green solutions to be restoring canals in fact they are only uh, one among the only eight cities who have just been awarded a UNEP project called generation restoration to be restoring one of their canals uh, the Tevarapatnu road canal next slide so basically i'll just say that the journey has just begun we have some of the pioneer cities and we have a long way to go but there are toolkits available there are processes available there are people available who can help cities and just like our you know word of mouth to be spreading further and uh, just because the sir was talking about chandigarh the the pbr or the people's by district register of chandigarh was developed with support of india uh, next slide. Yeah. So that's in a nutshell. I'm available for questions now, later, wherever. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mona Lisa. Very interesting topic, actually. So before going to the questions that have come some from audience, I would personally want to know what is a good score for a city biodiversity index? Like Bhopal has scored 44 out of 72. What, uh, what so, would be, in your opinion, a good uh, score? Yeah. So basically, it's not really classifying as a good or a bad score. Bhopal has got 44. Five years down the line, what they get? If they go down, that's bad. If they improve, that's better. That's all. So in the first year, first time that the city implements, even if they get a zero, it doesn't matter. It just shows their intent to be working on uh, improving the biodiversity and its governance in the city. And whether it is documents. Whether these documents are there in the public domain? Can, yes, can... these are all available on the ICLE website, completely in public domain. Just go to the ICLE no, it, it, gives an idea, it gives an idea for the uh, officials and bureaucrats to uh, actually improve the biodiversity. Am I correct? Yes. yes Based correct. on these reports. Correct, correct. On these 23 indicators. Yes. yes. And what we report. do is for each of these indicators, we put in city-specific recommendations on how the city can improve the score. Or if the city has already got a four on four, then what the city should be doing to be maintaining that. Excellent. So one question has come from audience. I'll just mm -hmm. read it. Yeah, sure. Uh, it is from Atul Vivek from Kota. Ikli is doing some great work in Sholapur, Maharashtra, with respect to lake pond works. What are they actually doing? I wish to know, as I wish to associate okay. with them, if possible, right. as I am from Sholapur. Solapur, we worked on a project on integrated water management, wherein uh, the water for Solapur city comes about 100 kilometers away. And there is a lake called Ikruk Lake, which is surrounded by a lot of villages. So we brought the villages and the city together on a single platform, which we call a urban platform, to sit and discuss and develop a catchment management plan for Ikruk Lake. And we've also done a restoration of uh, Ikruk Lake using constructed wetlands. So the water which now enters Ikruk Lake, which was earlier just direct discharge of gray water, black water from the surrounding villages, is now treated water which goes into Ikruk Lake, which is actually drinkable quality. So that's a project that we did in Solapur sometime. Okay. And how long it will take to finalize a report? Suppose if I... Suppose the government of Kerala wants to go, do a similar work in Trivandrum. How long it will take to complete this work? I, I too had the same question. How long does it take to prepare the report? Yeah. At least six months because, six months. like I'm saying, our cities do not have these data points. So okay. we have to generate, sit with the city, discuss, get all these points out, all, all the maps that I'm showing you. These don't have these maps. We develop these maps. Like the, the also I'm right now here to develop a map. So okay. about six months it definitely takes, but it takes good level of cooperation from the city. If they don't cooperate, it becomes really, really troublesome for us. These three maps come from where different. you get this information. What is your primary source of information to prepare so the We map? start them with a uh, GIS based thing and then we come down to the city for ground two thing and then we finalize out. So ETA and, and city uh, wide exchange index, I think we did it in about four and a half months because the state wide board, again, under the leadership of Coach Rinya, was excellent support they gave us. Okay. Thank you, Mona Lisa. It was a very enlightening session. 
a new topic actually many yeah. of us may not be knowing about the city True. biodiversity index what you are doing yeah. on these 23 uh, indicators anyway thank you very much i think uh, those who have seen your presentation now and of course this presentation is going to be there in youtube and facebook of inha hmm. so those who are going to see later also i'm sure hmm. that they are going to benefit immensely from your uh, ideas and sure. the great work which uh, ikli is doing okay thank you very much uh, mona lisa